Hey y'all, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day. Today I'll be speaking about quantum nonlinear optics and I'll be revisiting a subject that I have a previous video on and that subject is time-dependent perturbation theory. Because we're going to need some results from time-dependent perturbation theory to solve for things like polarization and susceptibility uh, quantum mechanically. Whereas in previous videos, we solved for the susceptibility and polarization classically. So if you watch my video on time-dependent perturbation theory, you see we arrive at this result here, which I labeled equation one. And the I tried to remind you what the variables are here. CM dot, the dot's a time derivative, and CM is the probability amplitude to be in state M. This e to the minus whatever is a phase factor, and the omega M is the same thing as the energy of state M divided by h bar. And this h over here is the force, first order perturbed Hamiltonian, which is the one that depends on time. Because in that video, I wrote the Hamiltonian as a sum of a zeroth order perturbation, Hamiltonian, which did not depend on time, plus a first order perturbed Hamiltonian, which was this one. And it does depend on time. So for this video, I'm going to make some notational changes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall, I'm going to, instead of calling it H, I'm going to call it V now. And we need to be really careful about indices in this video. Uh, I'm most likely going to get tripped up myself, but I'll try not to confuse you too much with the amount of indices we'll be using. So, yeah, in this video, I'm just going to do the first order perturbed uh, coefficient. And in the next ones, I'll do second and third order. And that should allow us to solve up to the third order polarization. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna rewrite one by renaming HV, and I'm also gonna move this to this side. Okay, so that's all I did there. And I got rid of the minus sign in the exponent, and I rewrote omega m minus omega n as just omega sub mn. Okay, and now I'm going to rename the indices. So instead of m and n, I'm going to call m a, and I'm going to call n b. And... Uh, in a previous video, I used these, and I was only thinking about two state systems. I'm going to be try to be more general here and think about as many states as you want rather than just two. So the A and B don't mean one and two or anything like that. Um, oh, also, I have this written down, but I have yet to mention it. So equation one is exact. But not for too long, because we're going to incorporate time-dependent variation theory here. Um, but let me relabel the indices right now. Okay, and soon I'm going to be dropping this T, because I'm not going to keep writing it. <laughs> okay, so... We're still exact in the equation. And we can also, we, so with this, we can solve for C sub A by integrating both sides. And we're going to integrate from negative infinity to a time T. And we're going to rename all these T's, dummy variables, T prime. Um, but... The key thing here is we're going from negative infinity rather than zero, which is done some of the times. And this assumption 
is just saying, uh, eventually we're going to say, okay, we're 100% positive that we know our system starts in a ground state G a long, long time ago at time T equals negative infinity. But, okay, so before we do that, let's integrate both sides with respect to dt prime and then just relabel these t's t prime and we're going from negative infinity to t okay so hopefully you're still with me I haven't really done anything crazy yet. It's about to get real crazy. <laughs> okay. So, this is what time-dependent perturbation theory tells us. It tells us that we can solve for Ca uh, perturbed up to the nth order. Uh, we can solve for that by plugging in the n minus 1th perturbation on the right side of the equation. Or... I mean, this term of the equation. So, what I mean by that is this. Okay, so this is all I mean by that. Um, CA is perturbed up to order n. CB is perturbed up to order n minus 1. So we start by knowing the zeroth order perturbation, and we can find the first order perturbation by plugging in the zeroth one here. And similarly, we can find the second order perturbation by plugging in the first order one here, so on and so forth. And we're assuming that the series is converging so that each higher order perturbation is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so it sort of matters less and less and less the most important one is the zeroth and first order perturbations okay so note that equation 2 is exact still equation 3 is not exact because equation 3 is where we're starting our assumptions and we're also going to start with by assuming we're 100% sure that our state is in the ground state um, at t equals minus infinity so in other words we're 100% sure that C of G at T minus at T equals negative infinity is equal to 1 and all other C um, whatevers C A's T equal negative infinity is 0 because you square C G that's a probability to be in state G uh, was one. Okay, and also I should write a is not equal to g here. And this is gonna basically allow us to ignore this part, except for the, uh, except for the zeroth order perturbation. Okay, so now. We're going to plug in 1 for capital N and 0 for N minus 1. Because, okay, I should write a 0 here.
Okay, so we're going to start by assuming that b is equal to g, so that way this part is going to turn into 1. The sum is going to go away because if we're not in state b, then this is 0, and this is also going to go away because we're starting in the ground state. B is going to be equal to G here, and A is some higher lying state. So let me rewrite that here. Okay, so that's all I did there. Uh, I renamed the B's G's, and the sum went away because all other states besides G were not populated. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is assume a perturbative part. We're going to assume an oscillatory perturbation. So VAG, it depends on time. And I'm going to, going to rewrite it as some amplitude times some oscillating phase factor, like so. So this is, our perturbation is going to be some constant part that does not depend on time times a time varying factor and I rewrote it like this because the perturbation could possibly oscillate at many different frequencies which is how light acts because it's not perfectly monochromatic okay so now I'm gonna use this definition plug it in there into 5 I'm gonna call that equation 5 Okay, so all I did was plug in my assumption for the perturbation in there, took out the constants that don't depend on T prime, and now we're ready to integrate with respect to T prime. Sorry, that's a T prime there. So now I'm going to integrate with respect to T prime. Okay, so there we have it. Our first order perturbed probability amplitude to be in state A, starting from a ground state G. So in the next video, I'm going to do the same thing, except use equation, one of these equations. Equation 3, but instead of plugging in CB0, I'm going to plug in CB1. And I hope you'll stick around to watch that one. Thanks for watching this one, and have a great day.